Hello. Please hit like button and subscribe my channel. Also press bell icon for future video notifications. Thanks. There is new evidence that a 50-year-old blood pressure drug could find new purpose as a treatment to mitigate the often life-altering effects of increasingly prevalent PTSD, scientists say. Clonidine is commonly used as a high blood pressure medication and for ADHD. It's also already been studied in PTSD because clonidine works on adrenergic receptors in the brain likely best known for their role in fight or flight, a heightened state of response that helps keep us safe. These receptors are thought to be activated in PTSD and to have a role in consolidating a traumatic memory. Clonidine's sister drug guanfacine, which also activates these receptors, also has been studied in PTSD. Conflicting results from the clinical trials have clonidine, which has shown promise in PTSD, put aside along with guanfacine, which has not. Scientists at the Medical College of Georgia at Augusta University say it's time for another look at clonidine. They have laboratory evidence that while the two drugs bind to the same receptors, they do different things there, says Chin Wang, MD, PhD neuropharmacologist and founding director of the program for Alzheimer's Therapeutics Discovery at MCG. Their results published in the journal Molecular Psychiatry suggest that clonidine could provide immediate treatment to the significant number of people emerging from the current pandemic with PTSD, as well as from longer established causes like wars and other violence. Large-scale clinical trials of clonidine in PTSD are warranted, the scientists write. Their studies also indicate that other new therapies could be identified by looking at the impact on activation of a key protein called cofilin by existing drugs. The new studies looked in genetically modified mice as well as neurons that came from human stem cells, which have the capacity to make many cell types. In the hippocampus, the center of learning and memory, they found that a novel axis on an adrenergic receptor called 2A is essential to maintaining fear memories in which you associate a place or situation, like the site of a horrific car accident or school shooting, with fear or other distressing. In this axis, they found the protein spinophilin interacts with cofilin, which is known to control protrusions on the synapses of neurons called dendritic spines where memories are consolidated and stored. A single neuron can have hundreds of these spines which change shape based on brain activity and whose changing impacts the strength of the synapse, the juncture between two neurons where they swap information. Normally whenever there is a stimulation, good or bad, in order to memorize it, you have to go through a process in which the spines store the information and get bigger, Wang says morphing from a slender profile to a more mushroom-like shape. The mushroom spine is very important for your memory formation, says corresponding author Wang, Georgia Research Alliance eminent scholar in neuropharmacology. For these mushroom shapes to happen, levels of cofilin must be significantly reduced in the synapse where the spines reside. That is where clonidine comes in. The scientists found clonidine interferes with cofilin's exit by encouraging it to interact with the receptor which consequently interferes with the dendritic spine's ability to resume a mushroom shape and retain the memory. Guanfacine, on the other hand, had no effect on this key player cofilin. The findings help clarify the disparate results in the clinical trials of these two similar drugs, Wang says. In fact, when mice got both drugs, the guanfacine appeared to lessen the impact of clonidine in the essential step of reconsolidating, and so sustaining, a traumatic memory, indicating their polar opposite impact at least on this biological function, Wang says.
There was also living evidence. In their studies that mimicked how PTSD happens. Mice were given a mild shock then treated with clonidine right after they were returned to the place where they received the shock and should be recalling what happened earlier. Clonidine treated mice had a significantly reduced response, like freezing in their tracks, compared to untreated mice when brought back to the scene. In fact, their response was more like the mice who were never shocked. Guanfacine had no effect on freezing behavior. Obviously, Wang says, they cannot know for certain how much the mice remember of what previously happened, but clearly those treated with clonidine did not have the same overt reaction as untreated mice or those receiving guanfacine. The interpretation is that they don't have as strong a memory, she says, noting that the goal is not to erase memories like those of wartime, rather diminish their disruption in a soldier's life. When a memory is recalled, like when you return to an intersection where you were involved in a horrific car wreck, the synapses that hold the memory of what happened there become temporarily unstable, or labile, before the memory restabilizes, or reconsolidates. This natural dynamic provides an opportunity to intervene in reconsolidation and so at least diminish the strength of a bad memory, Wang says. Clonidine appears to be one way to do that. Adrenergic drugs like clonidine bind to receptors in the central nervous system to reduce blood levels of the stress hormones you produce like epinephrine, adrenaline, and norepinephrine, which do things like increase blood pressure and heart rate. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe my channel for more videos.